Welcome everybody to the room. Okay, so I got enough people to get started because the numbers are fluctuating and whoever's supposed to hear this, they will hear it. Um, but I wanted to start um, sharing my story with you guys. I'm going to be going on Facebook and IG. So if you're not following me on Facebook, my name is Stephanie Leonard. I just want to just share my journey with you because a lot of you are following me a lot of you are my subscribers and you don't really know me like some of you've been following me for a while and you kind of know like you know my history but i've got a lot of new followers and so i know a lot of you don't know like my story and i just think that um well one of the things that triggered it is that a lot of people come to me asking me how do i get to the tropics how do i leave how do i not work a job like how do i have what it is that you have but you don't really know my story you see that i reached a destination but you don't know the journey or the why um, of how i got here so i want to share that and some of you that have been following me you know that i i have not shared my experience being in the cult because I didn't want to be like the majority of people that left and used the victim mentality or wanted to be negative to gain followers. I really uh, held that experience sacred to me. It was an experience that I had and I know that a lot of people will never be able to have that experience or even want to. So I wanted to hold my journey at a high regard so when I chose to tell my story I wanted to be authentic, I wanted to be respectful, and, and you know, and I wanted to be encouraging to others because it has been a magnificent journey thus far for me. The ups and the downs, it still doesn't take away that it's it's my story. So today, I wanted to, to give y'all the story of when I gave a cult $20,000, and for some of you that uh, been following the cult you've heard of other people giving you know money um but you never heard about me giving money you know no you didn't really hear about you know my portion in that oh you did emily she said i remember when you gave birth and i also will tell that i also will tell that story too because that's the story within itself so why would i give a cult twenty thousand dollars of my money okay so where can i get started because this is just us just sitting having some tea you know talking um i just remembered that before i decided to join the cult that i was looking for something in my life i knew that i wasn't happy in my life i knew that i wasn't fulfilled in my life i worked a cubicle job I went to college. I did what everybody told me to do. I went to college. I ended up getting married when I was 25 years old. I ended up getting divorced when I was 27 years old. Like I was trying to fit into this box that my family expected of me, that society expected of me, that my culture expected of me. Like I was just wanting to live up to others' expectations of my life. Um, because I didn't have any direction. I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, you know. Um, and so as I graduated college and went out into the world, I started learning a lot about art. I ended up getting a degree in healthcare management and just had all different types of jobs and traveling. And so when I moved to Atlanta, I had a cubicle job. I was a medical coder and that was my career. Um, and I knew even as a child that I was supposed to do something different with my life. I knew that the world is supposed to know who I was. I didn't know why. I just knew that it was something more than what my mama and daddy was telling me. Because when I was a kid, my grandma, cause I was raised by my grandparents and she used to be like, you know, baby, get a job where you be a secretary and then you marry you a good man. Like for her and her generation, that was the pinnacle to be a secretary and then get married and have kids. And I believed there. I was like, okay, my goal in life is to be a housewife. That's what I always focused on. But then my aunts, they were like, no, you need to be aspiring to be more. Don't be like mama, you know. And so, but I get it. But yeah, I was in a lot of confusion. So. 
moving forward. Um, I had a cubicle job. I worked in the healthcare. And as I was awakening, I realized that the healthcare industry is what was killing people. I realized that what we know as a culture of health is... <laughs> I'm, I'm laughing at the West. Okay, I'm not looking at y'all's comments. Okay. So, I realized that what we know of as health in our healthcare industry most definitely was not that. If anything, it was killing us. It was keeping us dumb, dumb, deaf, and blind. And as I was awakening to the truth, I was starting to see that. And so then I started changing my diet. I started like, you know, leaving the church and started just doing a home church. I stopped listening to music. I was, I stopped doing a lot of things because I didn't want to be a part of the system. And I was like in my late twenties at that time. And so then when I changed my diet and became vegan, my aunt, she ended up getting cancer. So I was trying to help her and heal her, but then eventually she ended up dying because she didn't want to listen to me. She wanted to listen to the doctors and you know, that's fine. Um, it's not fine for her, but you know, it's, it's, it's fine. But I just started seeing things in my reality and I started seeing that the things I was trying to tell my family, um, they wasn't listening and they, they never discouraged me, but it was, I was always the oddball in my family that, you know, I was always changing my diet. I was trying to do something different. I was trying to be an entrepreneur. I was, I was always doing something. And I talked to my cousin the other day and she was like, I'm not surprised that you did what you did. She said, I'm surprised you lasted as long as you lasted. She said, because you always doing something, but you never stick to anything as, as long as I did with the cult. And I thought that was interesting. I mean, she was like, no, I wasn't surprised. So as I was awakening and I just wanted to do something different, but I didn't know what it was. I knew that the life that I was taught, I knew that it wasn't the truth. I knew working a job. I knew most definitely I did not want to work a job. I knew I did not want to work for nobody because every time I got a job, I always got into it with my manager. Like, because what you're not going to do is tell me what to do and you don't even know what the hell you're talking about. But it's a job. They're paying me. They're giving me money. So I had to, you know, give my will up to them because, you know, I had to pay bills. And so it was just really frustrating. And it got to the point where I ended up getting... I ended up uh I ended up getting wrote up because I went the fuck off on my manager because I was like over it. I was like, well, I'm not going to continue to give my life to you guys and you think you can just treat me any type of way you want. And I don't agree with what we're doing, especially I worked in oncology. So, I knew that the chemo was killing people. But but because of my bills hold precedent over my morals, I was like, well, that's your choice, girl. That's what you want to do. But at the same time, I'm still condoning in it. Even though I know that chemo was poison, I still condoned in it because I went to work every day sending you the bill because I was the coder. So I was sending you the bill for, um, for us to poison you, you know. So that was eating the weight of my conscience, right? So you can't get away with anything. You can't. So I... After I worked in the healthcare industry for years, guess what happened? My health started going down. Okay? Even though I was eating the best that I could and I was exercising and I was getting into the law of attraction because that was the pivotal point for me is that I got into the law of attraction. And when I start learning about the law of attraction, like Abraham Hicks and Oprah and talking about her stuff and like, Yala Van Zandt, like I was getting to all of these spiritual teachers in this new age teaching that it started opening, you know, my mind because I had been left the church years ago. And when I was really taught who Jesus was and what Christianity was, it just completely changed everything for me. Um, okay. Um, so, um, so as I'm working in the healthcare industry, oncology, chemo, my health started going down, okay? Like, I started getting sick. And it got to the point where the medicine wasn't even working. And that's, and I'm giving y'all the short story so we can get to the point. 
Um, but I started getting sick. Like I was deficient. I was deficient in, in vitamin D, anemic. Then the doctors started diagnosing me with autoimmune disease and that I had fungus all in my gut. Like I was going through it. But see, when I was a little girl, at the age of three, I always had irritation um, in my, my vagina area. You know, I don't want to make this about my vagina, but I just have to tell you, tell you guys, it's, this, is, this is why this is so dear to me. When I was a little girl, very at three years old, since three years old, I always had vaginal issues. Because anytime a woman talk about vaginal issues, you think she's a hoe because she's having sex. But no, it was something I was dealing with as a little girl. I would wake up in the middle of the night screaming because my vagina burned and it itched and it hurt, you know, and I didn't know why. And my grandmother, I just remember my grandmother um, waking up in the middle of the night, putting me in the bathtub, trying to soothe me, and put Vaseline on it. And it was something that went on for years for me. And so as a grown woman, I had to deal with that. You know, I had, and it didn't get any better, you know? Yeah, it's, it was, it was a lot. Um, so I believe my vagina led me to the truth. <laughs> I was always like, it's not a joke, but it's true. Um, cause a woman's vagina is sacred. It's her sacred space. It's your womb. It's, it's what gives life. So, and it's your creativity. It's your creative force. And when that is off, your whole equilibrium is off as a woman. Okay? So it's very important that you take care of yourself down there. So my body started deteriorating and I started getting deficient. Like, and most of us are deficient in sunlight. Most of us are anemic. Uh, and then I, oh, and then the doctor diagnosed me with hypothyroidism. So my thyroid was overactive my immune system was overactive like people always talk, um, think about taking care of your immune system but some of us have an overactive immune system so my immune system was it worked overtime when it didn't need to when nobody called you into work so my immune system did too much and it made my body very vulnerable you know, so even if I tried to have children, my body would destroy it or I would have a very hard pregnancy. For then, even though y'all saw me go through what I went through with my pregnancy, then his chances were very small because of my immune system, like my the way my body works. So the doctors, they were the natural paths. They were trying to give me, um, oh, you're not... <laughs> Maybe because you're in the live. Maybe because you're on your phone. <laughs> he's talking about I'm not, but he's in the live. So, um, so they were giving me drugs, and I was just getting really frustrated. And at the time, I wanted to be vegan. And they were telling me, no, you can't eat no fruit, and you can't eat hardly any vegetables. Only thing you can do is eat meat and some greens, and that's it. And I'm like, damn. I was like, and I knew something within me was just like, no, this this couldn't be. Um, and so I was just so depressed. And at the time, I was in a relationship with somebody too. And it was just really depressing to be with him because every time I was with him, the symptoms would come back. So ladies, you got to be very careful with who you lay down with because they can trigger, they can trigger shit in your body. Okay? Because of their energy. So once... I did all of that. I was just like, my I can't live my life like this. Some I need help. I need guidance. This isn't this isn't right. I need to do something different with my life. I'm over living my life like this. And and, and at this time, I was still doing. This is why the law of attraction. It's so important, you guys, because for the past two years of my life before that, I was doing law of attraction. I was doing I was heavy into Abraham Hicks and I'm still an advocate of Abraham Hicks. Um, but I was doing positive affirmations. I was doing positive aspects. I was writing. I was creating my life. I didn't know what it was going because I was being very general. And that's the reason why a lot of you get stuck. And manifesting because you get too specific. 
but you don't want to get specific on the vibration or the frequency that you were on because it's wobbly, you know, and there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of doubt. Even though you say you are abundant, even though you say you want to live in the tropics and you want to quit your job and you want to have this and you want to have that, in the back of your mind, you're telling yourself, no, you can't. No, you're not. I'm scared. I can't leave my mom and daddy. I, I can't do this. What am I going to do without a job? I don't know about no tropics. You know, da, 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 da. And so the universe hears everything, feels everything. You can't lie to yourself because you are the universe. So that's why you must be as general as possible of what you want. And so then as you work on that, then you can start being more specific. See, now in my life, on my path, I can be more specific because I am very focused on my frequency like I you I can't waver like I know what this is about so now I can be more specific in what I'm wanting and I get it just like that so um so I was doing all of that for the past two years I was just writing writing and and every night I would talk about what I love and what I enjoy and I was just doing the, the focus wheel I was doing all the focus work I was doing all of that See, what you see now, no, nah, I had to do, put the work in. I worked. See, a lot of you, this internet age, and that's what I call it, internet age, you want it and you want it now. But you're not willing to work and go through something and be patient and endure and trust. And that's what I did because I had no idea that my life was going to turn out like this. I knew that I didn't want to work a job. And yeah, I was that bold. And I had the audacity to say, I don't want to work a job. I want to do whatever I want to do. I was bold with that. But I didn't know what it looked like. I didn't know what I had to go through to get there. You know, <laughs> I didn't know it was going to take all of that. You know, and I knew that when I became a mother, I wanted to take care of my child. And I didn't want to do it by myself. So, you see, I'm with my husband. We together 24-7 with our baby. Um, being parents together. And then I knew that I wanted to travel around the world. I knew that, um, I knew that I didn't want to be in the States. I knew that. You know, I, and I, I knew that I wanted to be a part of nature. I knew connecting to nature was to con was connected to everything. And I knew that that was the one thing in our life, in our culture, that we were far removed from was nature. And right now, the time that we're in, that's all we have is nature. Okay. Um, and so I just knew that, but I just did the work, y'all. And that's why you must pay attention to your thoughts. So, as I decided to, to, I was tired of my life. And I was like, and I, and I wanted to get better. I went on the internet. And I was looking. I said, well, Dr. Sebi, he can heal everything. You know, I was looking at this. I was looking at Dr. Morris. I was looking at the raw foodies. I was just trying to find whoever I could find that could heal me. Okay, and I said, well, Dr. Sebi can heal anything, so let me go to Dr. Sebi video. So I put in Dr. Sebi video, and there was this dude and this girl talking about why Dr. Sebi is a crook or a lie, and whoever sells, you know, is the devil, or why Dr. Sebi is something like that, the gist of that. And I was like, who is this man, and especially a black man, talking about Dr. Sebi? Nobody talked bad about Dr. Sebi. You know, and so, but I must be nosy and hear what he got to say because we has the nerd to talk about Dr. Sammy. So, I go and click on the video and you know, some of you know who it is. I don't want to mention the name, but whoever has been watching me, you know, because it's not about them, okay? Um, <laughs> so I click on the video and this man is just going in and I was just, oh my word, like, no he like he was just saying all kind of stuff and then there was a, a lady with him and they were in they were in outside and they had no clothes on and it was just like they were in a whole nother dimension and I was like who are these people and why is he so angry <laughs> like that's what but I must listen like I was just compelled to listen to the video because it was like it was 
everything that I needed to hear. It was like, if you buy, if you vitamin me deficient, if you anemic, if you've got something going with your thyroid, if you're something with this and something with that, you need to be in the tropics. The reason why you got all of what you got because you 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 don't you're not near the sun, and you're not connected to the earth, and you're not eating the foods of the earth. And I was like, oh my gosh, he knows me. Oh my gosh, you know. So I was like, oh my goodness. It was just like I was awakening right there. It was just like so simple, right? It was so simple, but it's not. The truth isn't always so simple because our hearts are hardened and our ears are closed so we can't hear. So I ended up telling my, my boyfriend at the time, my cousin, because they seemed like they was woke and they was open. And I was like, have y'all ever heard this person? And they were just like, no, and he's rude. <laughs> like, and I was like, okay. I was like, well, I'm not going to tell them or nobody else. So I just continued to watch the videos and then I ended up reaching out to him and then um, <laughs> I ended up reaching out to him and was just, you know, was straight up. And then he ended up calling me. He like he ended up calling me and we had a conversation. And then within that conversation, y'all, it was just like it was like my DNA was activated. It was like whatever he said to me, it oh it just broke down that wall. And I was shook. I was healed. In that moment, I was healed in that one conversation. Because you want to know why? Because I was my perspective, my perception, my thought, my frequency went to a whole nother level. It went to my higher self. So even though he might have called himself my higher self, no, I came into my higher self. That's what people get confused when he say that. They be like, oh, that ain't my higher self. That ain't God. No, you are God. You are your higher self. So when I, when I found him, I found myself. That's who I found. It wasn't like it wasn't. He always say, I didn't heal you, you healed yourself. And that's a fact. I healed myself because I came into my higher self. Okay. And so after that, the world no longer looked the same to me. I, it was like, and I was telling Rambo this yesterday. I was like, I started noticing the trees. Hello, I'm Gwendolyn. And hello, D, D Haven. I started noticing the trees. I started talking to the trees. And like every morning before I went to work, I would go hug the tree. <coughs> and have to tell the tree to guide me because I was terrified. Like once I realize I was in the matrix okay once you realize you in the matrix you are terrified I was terrified I was like oh my gosh this isn't real and you know the men in the black suits and stuff I was like who in my life is those men in the black suits like I was just terrified literally like I was and I realized I was alone and the only thing I had was the trees. And so I would get up in the morning before I go to work and go hug a tree and talk to the trees. And I literally believe the trees were talking to me, y'all. It was that deep for me. Because you know we go up and down the Kudalini. So sometimes you are fully connected. And then other times you are not. And then most of the time you want to be here. You don't want to be too there and you don't want to be too there. You want to be you want to be balanced. You want to be here. That's why my husband says stay balanced. So... I was not balanced because I was like, whoa, <laughs> hello, the God named D. I love you too. And so the trees was my, was my protection. And so I would come home from work and I would just go and talk to the tree. Like, please tree guide me. Cause I don't know what to do. And I would cry to the trees. I, I mean, I, I did because I was awakened to the truth. I was awakened that what we were doing to the earth and the earth was was a reflection of what I was doing to myself. Okay? So, even right now with the coronavirus, right? You got to look at this symbolically. Look at how the world, how we've been treating ourselves. The foods that we're eating. The people that we're around. How we treat each other. How we treat the environment. So ultimately, we are the virus. So we can walk around all we want to with face masks, but you are the virus. 
humanity as a whole is the virus. That's why humanity as a whole is moving in one direction. Humanity as a whole is depleting us of our resources. Humanity as a whole is moving in fear and ignorance. It's not just, oh, world, because humanity is the virus. Humanity is what is fucking up the equilibrium of the earth. So as I was saying that humanity, we're depleting nature of its resources. We are depleting the earth of its resources. We, people, us, not the government, not they, you, <laughs> okay? And so, as you see what is going on in your environment right now, look at how you're moving. Look at how you're moving. Because then you will see if you are the virus or if you are the remedy. Just like you will see if you are the cancer or if you are the antidote. Because you will see, because when I go out, I don't wear no face mask. I don't, I don't wear none of that because I know what this is. I am the remedy. I am not the virus. I am not the cancer. So as long as you move like that, you are showing yourself in your universe who you are. Because if you understand how the body works, it, it doesn't work like that. The virus doesn't work like that. I wish my husband was in here and he could break it down to y'all, the virus, like scientifically what a virus is. And how a face mask is not going to help you or not help you. It's like you're doing. <laughs> I'm thankful. I'm thankful, honey. But, but yeah. So that is, that is what we see. So moving forward in the story, um, I decided I wanted to leave. And I was just like. All of you that reach out to me was just like, I need to get out of here. I need to get out of Babylon. I want to move to the tropics. Because as you see now, that what will actually save you from the virus is the sunlight. It's vitamin D. And where you live, if you're not between the Tropic of Cancer and Capricorn, you're not going to get the, the highest frequency of the sun. Because that's where the sun hits directly. Because we already don't be outside like it is anyways. And we already up and closed. So you want to be in an environment that will help you instead of depleting you. And so now, what? when is it? It's March? March is just now spring. So in order for you to really get the sunlight where you are, you got to wait all the way to June. And we don't know how long this virus epidemic is going to last. Since they said that it's the sunlight that kills the virus, well, none of y'all are near the sunlight. Like, you really need to be in the sun, okay? And so, um, I get, it's so much, it's so much I want to say, I'm like going all over the place. Okay, so, I was just like you guys, where I'm like, I needed to leave, but I don't know where. I don't, I don't, ha I don't know what to do. I don't want to go all by myself, you know. And, but I know that I need to leave. But I don't know what to do. I'm scared. And I don't want to do it by myself. Okay. Yeah, uh, for Nita, you, uh, but you got to make sure you're outside. It might be hot right now in Georgia, but in order for you to really receive the vitamin D, you need to be outside at least 30 minutes to an hour. And then the sun is only out. At a certain time frame so I say between 11 to 2 is when the Sun is at its highest but I think even in the tropics and where you are you're not going to get a sufficient amount of UVB I think that's what it is and where you are it's not a sufficient amount UVB is what your body needs but I'm not telling I'm not discouraging you where you are do the best at where you are okay so that's why I said if you're there make sure you are outside at those times to to really get the sunlight and then when you're outside make sure you're stepping on the ground with no shoes on um, so um, I did this for three I did this for three years and still doing it um, so I was just like you guys that I needed support I didn't want to do it by myself 
you know, I didn't want to do it by myself. I didn't know. I, this was new to me. I never thought I would leave the country, you know. And I continued to stay connected to, to the cult. Like, you know, because I was, became a student, like most of you. And then one day we had a conversation. And he was like, you know, you you should be my wife. And I was just like, okay. Like, I was like, I was like all right. Like, okay that's you know because i believed in what he was doing and i believed in the cult and i was just like that's my position okay i'll, I'll do it you know um and so then i prepared myself to go and so when i made that commitment it was like you gotta be here in two weeks and i was like oh shit so i had a whole i had a whole life y'all i had a whole life i had to give up in two weeks Okay, because a lot of you come to me and be like, what do I need to do? But if I told you what you needed to do, could you give it up in two weeks? See, I gave up my relationship. I was about to get married. At the time, I felt like I found the love of my life. I did find my soulmate. I gave that up. I had a beautiful and I still do have a beautiful family. Huge family. Uncles, aunts, cousins, tons of cousins. I gave that up. Then I had a job where I was making about sixty-seven thousand, sixty to $70,000 a year. I had no debt. I had no student loans. I had no car payment. I gave that up. And I was driving a Lexus. A Lexus, like I said. No car payment. I gave that up. The identity that I thought I had I gave it up all of it all my clothes all my possessions I had tons of clothes y'all I just had tons of clothes and jewelry and I used to be a couponer so I had I had all kind of toilet paper paper towels I was a hoarder okay and I got all that shit for free because I was coupon I knew how I was a coupon pro so I had all the toothpaste I had all the dental floss I had all the Glade plug-ins, paper towels, tissues, cleaning product. I had it all. I had it all. And I also was into natural hair. I had all the body butters and the natural soaps. Like, I had I had it all, y'all. And I gave it all up. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I didn't. I did not know what I was getting myself into. Like, you know, what you see on the camera ain't what you see when you get there. But I didn't know that at the time. Okay? I just knew that this is my soul family. This is what I need to do. I was called for the mission. And I'm in it. I'm committed. You know? And um, but I remember I called my boyfriend at the time. And I was so scared because he was like, you got to call your boyfriend. And you got to break up with him. That let me know that you committed. So every time he was pushing me, like, you got to do this. Let me know that you committed. Like, you know, if you don't do this, then you're not on the frequency. Like, he always used to put that shit. Like, you don't do this, you're not on the frequency. And I'm just like, shit. So, but I knew I needed that support to push me because I wouldn't have been on my, by myself. Like, so, uh, so I remember calling my boyfriend at the time. Because he knew of the cult. But he, but he just like, that ain't my thing. Like, I'm on something else. And I, call, I remember calling, I was so scared. I was like, hey, um, yeah, you remember that video I showed you? He was like, yeah. I was like, yeah, um, I am moving to the tropics. I'm going to Costa Rica. And then he started laughing. And he was like, and he was like oh, you serious? And I was like, yeah, I'm serious. And I said, and I'm never coming back. And then he was like, hold on. Just imagine your best friend. Because him and I were cool. Like, it was telling you. Him and I, it was one of my best relationships I've ever been in. And he, this is like you breaking up with your best friend. That's what it's like. You Just imagine your girlfriend. Not just like a romantic relationship. But just imagine like your, your ace boom clone. You'd be like, you know what? I can't be friends with you no more. Goodbye. I'm never going to talk to you ever again. That's how it was. And I remember I could hear, literally hear his heart break. Hey, one and only Sheree. Yeah, I would get, I would let Mary on the live and she could tell you because she used to work with me and she could tell you how I quit my job. <laughs> but I know you probably don't want to come on the live, huh? 
So anyways, um, I never just could hear his heart breaking. As I told him that I'm leaving, I'm never coming back, and I can't be with you no more. Just imagine, because I never explained to him. I, I, I tried, because I, cause once I started watching the videos, I was like, look, we're in the mood to the tropics, because you got some land in Jamaica, we need to make this happen. And he was just like, no, I ain't leaving my mom. I ain't leaving my mom. I ain't leaving my job. I ain't leaving my friends. And I was just like, at a point in my past life, I knew that I had given up the truth for everybody else, for my relationship, for my family. And I knew at this point, I couldn't do it in this part of my life okay I knew this was the, the moment in my life to where I had to choose the truth I had them push forward so it was a test he was my test because the universe knew um, <laughs> the universe knew. Mary let me know if you want to come on live and you can tell them about when I quit my job um and I knew that this time I couldn't do it. I couldn't give up the truth for nobody. I don't care how good looking, how good the relationship is. I had this was my sacrifice. And I just remember his heart breaking. And he was just like, Are you serious? And I was like, Yeah. And he was just like, He's like, You don't think that you couldn't come to me and say it in my face? He said, You had to do it like this. And I was like, Yeah. I had to do it like this. And he slammed the phone. Well, he didn't slam the phone when he had cell phones. But I imagine that he pushed the phone, you know, the ending of the phone with his finger real hard, you know. Because it wasn't like he just, you know, the landline. So, and I just cried. I was in the front of my, I was in the car. And I was about to get a massage. So I used to get massages. And I was just sitting there. No, I think I had just got a massage because I wanted to just be relaxed. And I just remember sitting in the parking lot crying because I was like, oh, my fucking God. Like, y'all, I was doing shit. And I'm like, oh, my fucking God, what am I doing? I don't. And I, but it was a force. Like, I was just going with the force. And I was like, oh, my God, I didn't understand it. But I was just going with the force. And I was, I just cried and I texted him. I was like, I did it. And he was like, good. Now on to the next level. You know, it was just, it was like some shit you see in the movies. I'm just like, oh my God. <laughs> like, it was like, I was Neo talking to Morpheus. And he was like, okay, on to the next level now. And so, yeah, so I did that. And so then he was like, okay, now you got to quit your job. And I was like, shit, but I got to make some money. <laughs> She was like, no, ma'am, you don't want me to tell. Oh, I do. I would love for you to tell the story. Everybody, I, People like that type of stuff. But I understand that some people don't like to be live. But I would love for you to share your perspective of when I quit my job and just, you know, everything. And uh, so then next he was like, okay, now it's time for you to quit your job. Because like, one day he had reached out to me. He was just like are you at work? And I was like, yeah. Because I was just going away. I was going to put my two weeks in. I was going to be diligent and put my two weeks in and then quit and then move to tropics. And so he was like, nah, you got to quit your job now. It's too much of a distraction. I need your full focus. And right now you're not focused because you're at work. And I was like, oh, hell, here we go again with the next level. I was like, okay. All right, I got to stay on the frequency. I got to stay on the frequency. I said, okay, I got how I'm gonna how I'm gonna do this? Like how I'm gonna quit my job? I've always had a job. I've always worked since I was 17 years old. And now I'm just gonna quit my job for for some nigga in the tropics. Cause it was like even though I thought I felt like he was my higher self, it still was some dude on the internet. And I'm like, oh damn, I'm gonna quit my job and then then what am I gonna do? <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. I was like, okay. So I was so nervous, y'all. I was like I was always like this because I because I was just moving on just the force this this the faith and it was like and that's why I told people you don't it's not about you talking bad about anybody to go to that cult because when you are chosen to go there nothing can stop you so allow that to happen for them but I know how it feel it's like you in a trance and you're like okay I gotta do this and it doesn't make any sense so I ended up typing out a letter to because I was I was actually glad to leave my job because I couldn't stand them. Like I, it was cool, but I really at the end I couldn't stand them. And uh, 
so I ended up typing up a letter and then um that day I worked because because Mary the girl that's in the room she wasn't there that day she was off that day so I wanted to make sure that me and her worked together so I wanted to make sure that when she came into work that she wouldn't have so much work to do because I knew that I was about to to like you know flake on them and I knew that whatever I didn't have to do she's going to have to do so at least I was like let me make sure I do as much work as I can for Mary because I know it's going to be an adjustment so um so I wrote the letter out right I typed it out and so at the end of the day because I didn't want to face them I was like I cannot face them I have to just send an email and like you know I was like I cannot face them and so then I um sent the email and I I thought that I scheduled it to be sent out at four o'clock because I left at 3 30 I think and I thought that I had and I had printed the the letter out to put on the desk but then something told me no just go ahead and send an email so there could be a copy that you actually sent it so I thought that I scheduled the uh, email to go out to my to the manager and to the director. Okay, that's what I thought. And so I didn't leave the actual letter on the on the desk. And so, oh, oh what? <laughs> that's why. That's why I said, man, you can come on and share your perspective. I'll just give you my perspective. I'll just give you my perspective. Okay. And so I thought that uh, that's what I did. And so, um, so then the next day, like that was it. I didn't go back to work. So they know that when I come to work, I'm always on time. I'm never like, you know, not uh, at work. So I didn't come to work that day. And so then they trying to call me, but I think I end up changing my number. I end up changing my number because I didn't want nobody. I didn't want nobody to reach out to me. I think that's what it was. I ended up changing my number, and then. I think Mary, she ended up emailing me. She ended up emailing me. And she and I think and then I ended up getting a message. I can't even remember. Either I know I ended up getting a message from my from my manager because they were concerned they ended up calling the police. They called the police. I was like, where is she? Like she ain't come to work. And it's only been a, a day. And she didn't come ready to call the police. And then I ended up and I was like, Well y'all didn't get the letter? And it was like, no, we didn't get no letter. And I was like, oh, I was like, I qu yesterday was my last day. I quit my job. And they were just like, oh, okay, well, we just want to make sure you're okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> and that was it. It was so awkward because she was just like, oh, we didn't get no letter from you that you quit. Um, that you quit. Your I know, y'all call the police and everything. And they was like, we didn't get no letter from you. And I was like, well, I sent you an email, you know. So, I, I was there at that job for five years, y'all. Five. I was at that job for five years, and then I just ended up quitting and never came back. But I didn't want to do it like that because even though I couldn't stand them, and I knew I didn't want a job, work a job, I still appreciate what they gave me. They still gave me an opportunity, and I and I'm and I'm just not a fuck person. I, I'm just not, I don't care who you are. I'm I'm going to treat you the way I want to be treated. So, in that situation, it most definitely did not turn out the way that I wanted it to turn out. They thought I just, just didn't show up. They thought something happened to me and everything. And, yeah. And so, I was like, oh, shit. So, I was like, okay. I said, all right. So, um, that was it. So, I quit my job. And then I ended up doing the video. And the video is on my YouTube. So, if you want to watch that video of when I quit my job, it's on my YouTube. My YouTube is Zen Light TV. And then I talk about me quitting my job because I was like, oh my gosh, I do not have a job. Like, you do not know how liberating it is not to literally make that choice and not have a job. Because I know a lot of you are just like, you want to quit your job and you want to do something else, but you're afraid. But I'm telling you, I'm, just, I'm giving you guys my story so you can't compare yourself to me. I want you to know what I went through. That's the reason why I got what I have now. Okay? Because it wasn't easy. I know it's not easy just to quit your job and do something else. I know that. You know, uh, it was really hard. You know, but I did it. And so then, so then, like, after that, that's when it got real. 
that's when it got real. I said, okay, I'm I'm committed to this cult now because I don't got no job. I don't got no man. Um, I'm changing my number because he didn't want me talking to nobody. He said, because you don't want to be influenced. So I changed my number. My best friend was going the fuck off. She was like attacking him because she ended up finding out and... And I had to change, and, and I ended up having to move out of my apartment. I didn't even tell my apartment I was leaving, but I was month to month. I didn't have a lease, so I just left it, and um, I left everything. I left everything because I sold everything. Somebody asked me who had my stuff because I had all this stuff, and I had this friend that I was um, telling what was going on, and she was very supportive, and she had just got an apartment, so I was like, you can have all my shit. So she came in, her and her boyfriend, with a big ass box truck. And took all of my stuff, whatever. Because all I had was my 70 liter backpack and my book bag. Whatever couldn't fit in there, couldn't go with me. So she took everything. It was five years of all of my things. Now, I did have a Tupperware of memories. And that was stuff from when I was a little girl. Yearbooks, pictures, baby dolls, you know, keepsakes. I had that in the Tupperware. And I gave that to my cousin. I was like, give this to my mama or my grandma. I want them to keep my memories. You know, and she still got it to this day because nobody ever came to her house and took my memories. So one day I gotta go and get my memories back. Um, so, um, so yeah, so that's all I had. Y'all, I was like, oh my gosh, I am free. I was, and, and, and that's what was happening. That's what I realized what was happening. I was creating my freedom. I was going towards my freedom. See, a lot of y'all want to be free, but y'all don't realize what it takes to be free. You got to give up everything. You got to be able to let go of anything. That's why the message was give up what no longer serves you. Yes, I had all of those things, but who I was becoming, they no longer served me. And yeah, you might have these relationships and these family, but it no longer serves you. And you're going to use it as an excuse to keep you from your freedom. You can call it the kingdom. You can call it whatever. But it's the freedom. And that is what's holding everybody back right now. It's the, it's, it's the freedom. Now you're using the virus as an excuse. You're going to use whatever you need to use for you not to be free. Okay? And, and, and it's not easy. That's why most of y'all are slaves. Because slavery is easy. Being a slave to something is easy because you don't have to be responsible. You don't have to take no risk if you're a slave. And see, I no longer am a slave. See, that's why they continue to program that story back in the olden times 400 years ago. Oh, this is what a slave looked like. But you're not a slave now. No, you're a slave now. You're a slave to your life. You're a, you're a slave to society. You're a slave to your family. You are a slave to money. You're a slave to your job. But see, the reason why they continue to show you roots and, you know, and keep reminding you of Harriet Tubman and all of them because they want you to think that's what a slave, the image of a slave is. But a slave is action. It's what you do. It's what you do and what you don't do. So when you see someone like me, or when you see somebody that don't got that don't got no nice car, that's homeless, that you know is living off the earth, you looking at as a slave because they don't have the nice cars and clothes and Louis Vuitton and Gucci and jewelry and a nice big house. But that makes you a slave. You're a slave to the material possession. And I gave I gave all of that up. I was like, I don't really want it. And so, um, so then, I ended up going. I ended up going. And so this is where the money comes in. So I ended up only having like, because I, I had saved up money, but in order for me to buy the things that I needed and to pay off some things, uh, I, I used up a lot of my savings. So when I went to the, so when I went there, it was like, whoa, like seeing him in person is totally different. What you see on camera, it's, it's like, it's like, whoa. And it was amazing. It was like I literally went into another dimension. Like, it's like a whole other world. And I was like, whoa. The world that I knew of, the world that I left is no more. And that's what it felt like. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I was like, wow. I was like, okay. This is it. I did it. This is it. This got real. You know how that moment when you did something you think you went too far? <laughs> I might have went too far, 
but no turning back now. All right, y'all, so I got a minute left, so I'm going to end this live, and I'm going to come back. So if you want to hear the second part of the story, I'll see you there.